say your name just so that way we could get pronunciation right. Sure, uh, Dr. Luis Bonachia. Dr. Luis Bonachia. So I'm joined here with, with my professor from campus and I've been sharing some stuff with him about uh, the project for Frog Week, just about the conservation of native species and showcasing a lot of the frogs and toads from our state. Um, two of the featured amphibians are the wood frog and the American toad. Both, especially in the state and in the northeast, are not threatened with um, really declining. Uh, obviously that could change at any moment. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were just on a project focusing on the, the native species of Pennsylvania in the northeast. Uh, like you said, um you know, these species aren't necessarily in decline here now, but amphibians worldwide are in decline, and things can change really quickly. Uh, I really like the idea of getting people to see these animals regularly, see how they behave in captivity, as a way of kind of getting to know the stuff that's around us. Like we've talked about before, a lot of people tend to have a bias towards more exotic species, you know, myself included. <laughs> um, but this is stuff that's here, it's the stuff that's our neighbors, stuff that we should care about. So it's nice to see somebody really focusing on wood frogs and American toads, things that uh, we, we see outside of the nature area. Frog Week. We're out here in the spring and early March looking for wood frogs. There are a lot of reports of them being in this area. Private property right here. We're going to be going down trying to find some. Might be a little bit too early, but it's the official start of Frog Week. Looking for wood frogs. But yeah, we are in the western woods here for this episode. This is a little bit closer to my area. We will probably see many salamanders. This is a really wooded area here, but they've cleared out a lot of trees, sadly. There used to be a lot of wood frogs that would come up here and they would breed, but as you can see here, all of these trees that have been cut down. The forest has really taken a toll and the wood frogs have gone even further into the forest. So maybe we'll find some eggs while we're on this trip, but they're nowhere close to the road anymore. Wait, what, what is he? He is a Eastern Red Bank or Plethodon Canaria, I think. I am actually not the greatest with the salamanders in the area. I'm more specialized in the frogs and the toads. But Tyler here is the guy who really knows his stuff when it comes to a lot of inverts and the salamanders. So there's a lot of knowledge to be learned and there's a lot of interesting things to be seen on this trip. Pretty dusty. <laughs> oh, there he goes. This is like maybe six or seven logs and rocks in and we've already got three salamanders, all the same species and it's just starting to rain here. These guys seem to be thriving even though a lot of the trees have been down and there's a lot of construction going on in the area. A lot of people like to ride ATVs around here. So hopefully these populations will continue to thrive even though the frogs are moving due to the construction. At least the salamanders are hanging on. 
Now what is this? This is Scolopocryptops sexpinosus. Uh, common name, I have no clue, but this is one of the largest centipedes in the area. Uh, they can get a lot larger than this actually. I've found specimens up to near two inches. Uh, probably one of the most sociable, sociable centipedes uh, in the area. Do these possess any threat to the salamanders around here? Oh, absolutely not. Salamanders would more, more than likely eat these, unlike millipedes, which are poisonous. These guys are just venomous. So you don't think they hunt the salamanders? Oh, no, no. I know there's quite a few bit of centipedes that will hunt frogs and um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Those are eggs right there. Look where my light is. I think that's egg mass. It is. They have a healthy population here. You can hear the spring peepers here. Yeah. Oh, here's a wood frog. Oh. They're calling, and this is only one of three areas. I think that might be an egg mass over there. That? Look, you see where my light is? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. This is awesome. Oh, there might be even some. Oh, yeah, this is where everybody's been calling. I'll guarantee it, because look, there's even down here. So we found about. When you know where there's a population. All right, it's the end of March, and we've just found a wood frog breeding ground. They're literally all around us. Right here, let me see if I can get it. Can you shine the light a little bit away? Yeah. There we go. So these are wood frog eggs. This is one of the highlighted species for frog week here. So here is another wood frog. It looks like it's a male. It's a young male. It might have actually, might be a year old because it's a very small one. I know these aren't very large frogs, but it's something to see how abundant the population is here. Not everywhere where we're filming this is abundant in species, especially with the wood frog. So it's really cool to see. Um, they're not even afraid of us talking next to them. Wait, 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 wait. Watch where you step, there's a wood frog. Where? Right. See my light? Look at that. Oh yeah. It's a go. red one. How about you? You are beautiful. That is a nice plump frogo female. Wow. Yeah, look at you. Yeah, you're not even afraid of us. <laughs> you're right about the arms too. The positioning is different. Yeah, wow. Yeah, look at that. I see I've seen I've seen one wood frog bigger than her. It was yeah. actually the size is like a I don't know, maybe a, an older American toad, like maybe three it approached three inches. It was a female, it was this color. Um, I mean, you can't always guarantee by the color, but we believe this to be a female, and she also looks pregnant, so, yeah, I mean, you can't really definitely. dispute that, but... So that um, would say, like, the, the red one I called last night, not necessarily a male, mm -hmm. which I know you originally thought. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely female. You just tell by the belly and, uh, like, you were teaching me about the elbow positioning. You know, I think the coolest thing is that this frog is known to be so nervous and so scared. It's probably, it's probably scared, not gonna lie, but it's not running from us. And actually a really cool defense mechanism the wood frog has over any other frog species. If the wood frog feels that it can't escape, it'll actually turn around and try to face the problem. So it'll try to problem solve the, like right in the direction of the problem. So if like a person's chasing it, after a little while, the frog's gonna just turn around and it's gonna try to go the other way. So maybe that's why it's not moving, but just really cool. So I've actually brought the female over to this area here. It's a lot of water. Um, there's actually wood frogs in the water here, so they're gonna be calling probably whenever we leave. Um, the goal was to bring her over here to make her load a little bit lighter. She seems to be really cold. 
So she might have actually just emerged from where she was hiding. But so she's very slow right now. Um, this is what we believe to be a female wood frog. She feels pregnant when I picked her up. So she didn't make a noise. Um, we're hopefully going to see a wood frog um, grabbing a hold of her and going into amplexus maybe by the time we leave. I mean, we might not come back this way, but we are going to come back in a day or so. Um, so we'll get a chance to see if maybe she laid some offspring for us here. Look how much bigger the females are, but she's also pregnant. I think the females are more of a reddish color. Yeah, I think you had that back with last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they definitely have more red. So they are going to produce more eggs. So here is another female. We're about ready to conclude our search of the wood frog over here in this area. We will return. There might be some follow-up video footage, but overall this is a very successful population of wood frogs. They're very abundant in this area. They're out. There are actually more wood frogs tonight than spring peepers, which is awesome, but this is one of the rare treasures of Pennsylvania. They're a species that could potentially be threatened with warming temperatures, um, but there's also a lot of other conditions. We are finding these specimens in a, pier, in a, in a piece of the woods that is being heavily deforested, so there's a lot of different factors here that could really be at play. There looks like a lot of predator frogs out here to this species, so we're going to continue to um, come back and explore this area. We believe this to be a female as well. She looks a little pregnant. You can kind of see there's a little hunch on her back. Probably the egg mass is inside of her and that's why it looks like that. But overall it's a successful find. The wood frog is a very important part to Pennsylvania. It's both predator and prey. And they're also a very, a very unique frog. They have the ability to do things much like American toads and Fowler's toads. They live pretty far away from water. The only reason why we're finding them by water now is because it's breeding season and this is where they come. Oh, we got a spring peeper closer. <laughs> but uh, the wood frog is definitely a very important piece. These are not common pets, which is good, but they are affected by a lot of deforestation and man-made things. So in conclusion of catching up with the wood frog, it would just be advisable to avoid, if we can, deforestation and the destruction of their habitat. They are a frog that could potentially become threatened as time goes on. So hopefully we can work to preserve and conserve this specific species. The wood frog is the state amphibian of New York and it's a treasure in Pennsylvania.